friends, welcome. I am life architect Francesca Berry, and I'm so happy to have you here. The best place to be to create a home and a life that you love. Let's talk about minimalism. Oh, does it ever get a bad rap? It sounds like a bad word, doesn't it? To be honest, the word does sound a little scary, but the meaning of minimal is nothing more than owning what you love, use, and need. There's nothing really too scary about that. In fact, when you're sure that what you have is useful and light, it gives it purpose which should make you feel good about owning it. The opposite is true as well. When you own out of guilt or obligation, not really liking something, it not only strips the item of purpose, but leaves you feeling heavy and cluttered. Talk about scary. I love living minimal. And by that, I mean that I make sure what is in my space and my life has meaning and purpose. It doesn't mean I don't own stuff. It means the stuff I own fills my life with more happiness and not the other way around. I'm happy because what I own has meaning and intention. In the words of minimalist Joshua Becker, at its core, minimalism is the intentional promotion of the things we most value and the removal of everything that distracts us from it. Minimalism forces intentionality. Being deliberate and sure of what you own and why is living intentionally. And it's, key, it's a key component to living a life you love. Are you living minimally? Here are some signs that you might need a dose of minimalism. Number one, you spend more time cleaning things and organizing clutter than doing things you love, like being outside, reading, or being with your family. This is perhaps one of the biggest benefits to being a minimalist or even leaning that way. Minimal gives you mental and physical freedom. The constant state of needing to organize only gives you more of a headache. Number two, you compare yourself to others and what they own. You want to keep up, so you buy more than you need, more than you like, and certainly more than you'll ever use. This, I feel, is pretty common, and it happens to the best of us. The key is to be aware that you're doing it, and then question what you bring in, why you're bringing it in, and where it will be stored. Number three, you subconsciously or consciously think things bring you happiness. I'm not saying you can't enjoy or be happy because you bought the latest iPhone, but don't confuse having that new iPhone with true happiness. Stuff is temporary. Building memories and doing things that truly blow your skirt up, that kind of happiness lasts forever. Number four, you have a two car garage and can't park both cars in them comfortably, which means you can't squeeze yourself out of the car to avoid dinging the door and something cluttering the space. I always tell clients that everything must have a home, a logical home that makes sense for the item and the way in which you'll use it. Food goes in the refrigerator, clothes go in a dresser, cars go in the garage, which means stuff cluttering your garage either needs a storage system like hooks on the wall or shelving along the perimeter of the space or a better home somewhere in your house, in someone else's house, in a donation bin, or the trash. And the fifth sign that you might need a dose of minimalism, if you spend money to rent a storage unit for items that don't fit your home and you haven't used or needed the items in more than six months, you might need to do a little minimalism purge. Do any of these signs resonate? Don't beat yourself up if they do. Just consider lightening your load. Give some thought to what you really want to feel in your space. Keep the things that help you attain that feeling and don't be scared off by the idea of being minimal. It's just another way of giving you freedom to do more, feel more, be more. Grab that donation bag and pick a space that feels overwhelming, is crowded and cluttered, and get to the work of removing what doesn't bring you joy. You might find you really can have more with less and you'll see that minimalism isn't such a bad word after all. Now I'd love to hear from you. What do you think when you hear the word minimalism? Are you working towards becoming a minimalist yourself? Tell me in the comments. And if you liked what you saw in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up to support me and my channel. If you're new here, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a single video I post on how to get and stay organized and live minimally and simply. I'd love to have you come back and join me. Until next time, remember, you are the architect of your life. You have the power to choose the content, the thoughts, things, and people that will make it a life you love. See you soon.